Right guys, pressing on. In this video, what we're going to do is fix up some procedural UV coordinates on this. Um, we're also going to fix the color of these chipped areas uh, that we've just generated. So a lot of the work that we're going to do is in this Boolean node. So we need to get the, um, I can never remember which group, A inside B group. So in the output primitives, if we come to this A inside B, and then we'll put down a split node after the boolean and then split based on that a inside b group all right so now you can see it's giving and giving us the unchipped bit of brick and if we invert that selection it's giving us those chipped pieces okay all right so we'll focus on this section first we'll put down a uv unwrap Plug that in, and that gives us some quite neat UV coordinates, looking good. And then on the other output of our split node, we'll put down another UV unwrap and take a look. Okay, so yeah, that's kind of messy. So let's try uh, UV flatten. Okay, and that seems to have given us a bit more of a neater result. Okay, so we will do additional processing on these bricks just to tidy them up a little bit more. Um, so on our brick chip path, we need to apply some primitive color to that. So a color node set to primitives, and then we can give that you know any color we want and we'll again this will be a parameter we can pass to our shading parameters well on the digital asset so we'll call this color brick chips and give it that gold color all right so now hopefully when we merge these two streams together we've got our brick chips with uv coordinates and let's make that a little bit lighter so we can see Maybe give it sort of a tint of kind of brown or something just so we can see it a bit better. So yeah, there we go. We've got some UV coordinates on them. If we press space five, you can see the kind of, we need to do a little bit more processing on these. So I'm going to use a UV layout node, okay, to sort of even up the uh, UV space. But what I don't want to do is any rotation. So I'm gonna set, the axis alignment to position in 3d so that'll keep the, the bricks kind of relatively straight based on their position but if we press space one to jump back and then scale islands to match their surface area you can see we've got some nice neat uvs ready for texture assignment there all right cool so with that we can plug the output of that UV layout node into our for each. Let that do its thing. And there we go, ugly tangle of UVs. But if we're using tiling texture maps, which for this system I've been using tiling texture maps, um, you know, we don't mind, don't, don't care if they're overlapped. So there you can see we've, we've got nice neat UVs laid out on the brick face, so that's ready for applying like your favorite stone texture, or displacement map, normal map, all that good stuff. And we've also separated out the chipped areas as well, so we can either use the same texture map but tint it slightly different color, or we can separate that out into, you know, if you've got a specific texture map for the, the chipped areas. So what we'll do is after our split node, we'll assign some primitive groups for those. I've set Houdini off cooking again. So I'm gonna put the display flag here to prevent that. So these are gonna be in a group called brick face. And I'll copy that using alt and just drop that. And I'll call that brick chips. All right, so now we've got those into their own groups. So we can assign, that'll make assigning um, texture maps uh, much easier, okay. 
and there we go we're making some decent progress now the next thing we need to tackle is the grout in between the the bricks currently we can kind of see they're kind of floating in, in midair we need to create some new geometry in a procedural manner that will fill those gaps for us and uh, i guess yeah we'll do that in the next video so thanks very much for watching and i'll see you there